So today we're gonna be focusing more on how you get that wrinkle effect in the clothing. You also gotta keep in mind how you're going to be molding the sculpture if you are gonna be casting your piece when it's done. But we'll get to that here in a minute. First, if you haven't already, you're welcome to subscribe to my channel by clicking this button right down here in the right hand corner. I'll be putting out a new video every Thursday. I'll be focusing on sculpture, but there will be other videos covering different forms of art, such as painting and drawing. I love making ink drawings when I can. But that being said, let's get started with this part two of three uh, sculpting tutorial series. showing you how to get the natural look in the wrinkles in clothing. So uh, this is something that can be a little tricky, especially if you want to cast the sculpture because you need to think about where that mold is going to go. Um, because you know, sometimes clothes will wrinkle up like that. And uh, you want to be able to ha have that mold rubber go inside of there without screwing up the whole thing. I want to first do a quick review of last week's video to uh, remind you that we just create these small wrinkles by rolling up a thin piece of clay and then smoothing it out on both sides. I didn't go into that too much in detail in the last video, so I wanted to talk about it right now. And then you'll see where we're leaving an area where we're going to carve in our belt. And uh, you want to be sure to use that reference and look back at that for this by looking at um, whatever you have handy, whether it be a picture or it be an actual uh, mannequin with clothing on it. You can see here how just one small wrinkle takes quite a bit of time and effort to get it looking right. You will see here in a minute how the dynamic really changes as we get near that belt because the belt is starting to create a binding action on the fabric. That is why the creases will be straight near it, but below it they will still curve like I showed you in the last video because of the uh, effect of the breeze that we want to give on that light fabric. Additionally, I added a few spots in the dress that act like they are catching the breeze. So now I will show you how we created a belt out of solid clay. You can see the imprint around her waist, and I sort of... Uh, blended the ends of the folds of clothing into the uh, area where the belt would bind. And that's what we're trying to do here is make it appear as though the clothing is binding beneath that belt. I had to do an adjustment here too because the belt was not high enough up on her waist. Always make sure your proportions are correct when sculpting because you really don't want to go back and have to redo something like this. Here in a minute I'll show you why I have to build up the clay on her hips here. Returning to our reference, we can look at these creases a little bit better, and you see that there's very distinct ones on the sides. So I added a little bit of clay and kind of built up her hips so that we can give that effect. And that brings me to the point that I really want to stress here, and that is to follow your reference. You can see the straight lines that come down from her hips there, and they are a little bit different from the rest of the dress. I'm just working out the small details one at a time and it really starts to shape up. Fabric is challenging not only because you're trying to make something that's a heavy material, clay, look like something that's a lightweight material, which is the fabric. It's also challenging because different parts of clothing will behave differently. So there's all sorts of different um, techniques and patterns you need to follow. You can see as I'm working up towards the uh, top portion of her torso, I'm starting to use a different pattern here because this is where it, the clothing would not be binding as much as it would on the belt. You gotta keep in mind that gravity will play an effect too. So that's why I'm creating more wrinkles here where it's sort of bunched up. I'm also building up some of the area around her breasts and I'm removing some of the material below them because after a while here, I'm going to carve away a little bit more and it'll be adding more realistic wrinkles. You'll see here in the middle one on this band that I put in, I'm removing clay beneath it and then I'm flattening it down on that clay as I carved out 
a uh, wrinkle in it, as you can see. It's like a dent. To me, it's a dent because we're carving into solid clay, but to you, it probably looks more like a wrinkle, and you can kind of see how I just blend those together. Um, it is a little bit tricky, but you just need to uh, practice at that and work at it over time, and then it will really start to look like a living person is under those clothes rather than just solid clay. These are the bands I'm talking about, and you can see how I'm making them more bold so that they stand out more and the light catches them. Lighting is really important when creating a three-dimensional piece like this because it's really going to stand out where the light catches it in certain areas. And if you cast it in metal, that light will be more distinct than it will be right now. Right now it looks kind of uh, flat, but um, once it's in metal and it has that shine to it, these bands that I'm putting on here are really going to be distinct. This top section looks especially flat right now, but in just a few minutes you're going to see how much more detail it shows. And this is simply by adding just one more of those bands of clay. You can see how much of a difference it makes. And then, like I did earlier, I clear out some of that clay beneath it and then put it back down there. Here's a side view. Uh, this is to show you how rough those edges are. You want to just very carefully trim those up if you're doing something like this. And uh, this is more of an effect. This isn't actually how the fabric would behave as much, but we need to improvise a little bit. Because like I said at the beginning of the video, um, you need to keep in mind that rubber is going to fill all the spaces and all the little detail on the clay once it's finished. And you don't want that rubber to get stuck in there. If you have cavities that it gets trapped in, it'll tear out um, when you remove the mold and you'll have to redo it if it's really serious. Looking at it from the side, you'll see here that this little part is still sort of flat. So I'll just carefully take my sculpting tool and match up that curvature to the clay beneath this band that I put on there. Just as a quick reminder, I'll be using a completely different technique in next week's video because I will be sculpting the sleeves on this piece. I do still have a few more tips to show you today though. I'm just going to slightly speed up things a little bit here to save time as I show you a couple of these last tricks here. Now you'll see how I'm kind of making a radiant pattern and this is because uh, we got to keep in mind that we're going to get a little bit more volume underneath the clay or underneath the drapery I mean uh, because this is the side of her breast. So that's why we create that radiant pattern, because there's a little bit of binding on the clothes there. I'll just let you watch me add some of the finishing touches from this side view here. If you don't want to watch, go ahead and fast forward to 9 minutes and 45 seconds so I can show you the last tip of today's video. So finally, to conclude this part of the tutorial, I want to show you here how all these um, folds and wrinkles up here are sort of bend inwards, and they're a lot more smooth than the ones I showed you earlier. But hopefully now you can kind of see the pattern that's forming here. Unlike the dress and near the waistline, 
these sort of have a curving effect but not from wind like in the last video this is just from gravity so I want you to imagine these forces on the fabric as you're watching these videos and remember that the fabric is sort of at the mercy of gravity or wind or something that's pulling on it and understanding those concepts are really the key to being able to sculpt realistic looking clothes out of solid clay. Here's a glimpse of next week's video where you can watch me sculpt the sleeves on this piece. Now this part's going to be a lot more challenging and that's why I wanted to save this for last because if you're following along I would recommend working on those other techniques before you go up to this one. Take a look at the back side here and you can really see how realistic that dress looks and it really does have that effect of a breeze hitting it. So you can see the wind is the force that creates that pattern but the sleeves on the other hand are going to have a pattern that uh, is not affected by the wind and we're going to be showing you how to work with that in next week's video. But that's all for today. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you guys next week.